Let's talk about Lawrence Limburger, the main villain from Biker Mice from Mars, the show which ran from 1993 to 1996 before eventually getting a small reboot in 2006. In the 2006 version, Lawrence is nothing more than a little bitch to a guy called the Pit Boss, a guy who looked like every WWE wrestler when they retire and become alcoholics, but that's a story for another time. We're here to focus on Lawrence, a man with a painfully wanky name from the planet Plutarch, whose race solely concentrates on conquering other planets. Of course they do. The Plutarchian method of choice to do so is strip mining. And yes, I know what strip mining is from many, many hours of diamond farming in Minecraft. And no, it's not getting naked 50 feet underground whilst hoping your canary hasn't passed out. So calm yourself down, Kofi. Lawrence and his race of wrong'uns play Micecraft. <laughs> See what I did there? And strip mine planets for all their natural resources. Unfortunately for him, when Limburger tries his old tricks on Mars, he gets scuppered by some freedom fighters. Unperturbed, however, he captures all of them until three little slippery bastards manage to escape and flee the planet. I guess you know which three they are. But wait, let me get through it, you fucking impatient Plutarch. The three mice of the biker variety here obviously flee to Earth and settle in... Chicago. Yeah. Throttle, Vinny and Modo, yeah, that's their names, station themselves in a biker's garage aptly called the Last Chance Garage and make friends with a lovely little lady called Charlie. Charlie helps them arm themselves with some flares, some lasers, some bionic arms, you know, Chicago's finest weaponry, to ultimately fight off Lawrence and his gang of wannabe biker boys. Meanwhile, Charlie has to constantly also fight off Vinny, who's always trying to finger her. Minging. It's from this garage that they set up a base to take on Lawrence and his gang of nonces like their own little Tracy Island. When I first saw Biker Mice from Mars, I was sold. I mean, what's not to love here? Heavy metal, motorbikes, scantily clad mice. I just need some tits. <laughs> There she is. But back to the biggest hit of this show, Lawrence. Lawrence always freaked me out. When we first see him chasing a mice, he's in his real form, this weird looking fish thing. He's got green skin, he's fat yet muscly somehow. He's got these glowing orange eyes and sharp teeth. His voice is like weirdly deep and calm most of the time, but then when he's angry, it just switches into this devilish squawk. I hate him and the giant tower he lives in and even the green worms that he eats all the time. Fuck them all. Speaking of that tower, in one episode in the original series, it was actually revealed that that tower has been rebuilt at least, it says, 56 times. So either Lawrence's construction skills are nightmare fuel in themselves, or Karma has well and truly kept pace with this epic thunder c Even when he's in his Earth form, though, he looks like everyone's favourite Korean director. <laughs> Come at me, Jimmy boy. In this form, though, it looks like his fake skin has just been pulled over its fish head, which I... I guess it has, but his fins are now replaced with this shit quiff and his fishy detailing has been replaced by this bubbly double chin that even Johnny Vegas would be proud of. And his eyes have gone from that angry orange to just this weird porcelain white that just looks fake somehow. He does, however, retain his evil looking brow line just to make his face look a little bit furious at all moments. The only bit that's positive here is his dentistry, which puts Instagram influencers touting those mouthpieces to absolute shame. He went from two rows of fangs to the perfect fucking grill. Paul Wall would love this guy. I slightly rate it, to be honest. Especially with my classic English pegs, which make it look like my fucking tongue's in jail half the time. But Lawrence looks like he'd either smell of sex panther or a bin that's been left out in the heat. No wonder his last name's based on a Roman cheese known for its pungent smell, and ultimately that's why all the nicknames he gets in this show relate to cheese somehow. Luckily though, no matter how many resources, time, money, or energy he pours into trying to be evil, the Squirtle Squad over here always gets the upper hand and fuck him and his tower up. This tower, by the way, either gets smashed to pieces or somehow launched back into space almost every episode, which is pretty impressive when you think it's just mice with helmets on scuppering him. Most of his plans involve farming the earth, even for the most basic resources like dirt or snow, which kind of begs the question, why not just freeze water on your own planet? Like, why is that not a thing? Anyway, he's always been on the rob for dirt, rocks, precious metals and oils, which ironically these bikers use enough of just ragging around on their bikes 24-7. The idea for Lawrence is to send this all back to his own dying planet, which I guess somehow makes him not so bad. He's just trying to save his own planet, but he's doing so by destroying everything else, and that's quite douchey. Luckily enough though, Laurie Povich is finally defeated at the end of the original series, and when he comes back in 2006, he's just a little bitch to the new bad boy on the block, the pit boss. In his return, 
and he's lost a few pounds but it makes him look no less of a bellend so after some tussling back and forth trying to regain his power he's tricked by Lord Camembert who leads him to the biker mice who take him prisoner once and for all before blasting him with a regenerator and that turns him back into a regular fish and then they just keep him in an aquarium within rump industries I guess trapping someone like that in an aquarium for the rest of their life in plain sight in just an industrial building is actually nightmare fuel in itself but you know this guy was a so who cares even now that he's just a little guppy I'll never forget Lawrence and the feeling he instilled in me when watching biker mice from Mars as a youngster his off appearance his overall aura it just made me used to feel really uneasy I hated it and I would squirm watching him every time he spoke I just found it weird and unsettling even knowing that the biker mice from Mars would eventually get him in the end his evil and cunning plans just to fuck everything up used to worry me until they were stopped but what do you lot reckon is this just me overreacting about some shit fish with legs or did Lawrence Limburger make you feel this way as well let me know in the comments below but either way I've been Stuart with Unleash the Ghouls and until next time good night and sweet nightmare fueled dreams Thank you.